So, so Emma, uh, what is your connection to Huntington's disease? Um, my connection is through my mum. Um, she passed away in 2007 after having Huntington's for around, around about six years from what we can kind of work out from it. Um, her birth mum had it. My mum was adopted, so we're not sure how many of her natural family have it. Um, it was me and my brother, and we both remain untested. You said your mother passed away in 2007? Yes. After six years of... after being diagnosed, I guess. Um, she was diagnosed about two or three years before she died, but there was a period where we didn't know what it was um, until family history being traced back, and we realised her biological mum had it. So it was quite a fast decline for my mum. Um, and in that period before she was diagnosed, were there, uh, what was happening, what was going wrong, what was different? Um, it started off with her stumbling over, dropping the odd plate, the odd, the odd cup, things getting smashed, um, forgetting little things that, that you told her, just things that were quite out of character. Um, and I think we all kind of, didn't really take too much notice of it and just thought, oh, just been a bit scatterbrained, but gradually it was more frequent, more often. She'd forget more things, and it, it progressed. And since your, your mother's death, um, what's it been like in, in, the, in the family growing up? It's been difficult. Um, my mum, I was very close to my mum. Um, before she got HD, we got along amazingly well. No arguments, nothing. Um, that changed within probably the last year of her being alive. And losing her just left a massive gap, but it also left quite a lot of guilt as well, as to how probably me and my brother both dealt with HD because we didn't know a lot about it. Um, and it's been difficult know knowing whether to get tested, whether to leave it, whether to do it now what would happen if we were tested positive or what would happen if the other one tested positive or was negative. So it has been and remains to be quite difficult. Uh, you mentioned guilt there yeah. about your mother. Yes. Uh, can you explain why you felt guilty? I think, and I speak for my brother as well, there was a lot of guilt in... My mum became very irrational as she progressed with HD and quite obsessive about things. An example would be food, she'd become really obsessed with it, we'd have free, a freezer full of it. But with, uh, with the HD, she wouldn't eat it, and she'd either forget to eat it, or she would just be completely irrational and refuse to eat, to the point where we had to throw food away because it was going out of date. And my mum would sit and cry because we'd, we'd thrown food away that she could, but we couldn't eat. And I remember having one massive argument with her because she bought about eight packs of mashed potato. And I said, you don't need these. You really don't need them. Don't keep buying them. Um, it would it would spiral and spiral. And I found that, I mean, looking back now, I think I wasn't arguing with my mum. I was arguing with Huntington's disease. And, but at the same time, I feel guilty for that. The fact that I was arguing back, but it's the frustration and Kind of the anger at seeing something do that to someone, the, probably the one person that you love the most. And I know that if the HD wasn't there, then none of that would even have occurred. Was your father around uh, while you were growing up? My dad was around until I was about 14, 15. And after that, I'd see him in bits after my mum died. We fell out quite a lot and I was a lot closer to my mum. And I found that the side of the family that had no connections with Huntington's disease, even though I'd explained what it was so they could understand, they still were like, oh, well, this could have brought it on or this could have brought it on. And I'm like, no, it was, there's just a lack of understanding which would make it more frustrating to get along with them because they didn't understand. and. I guess for me and my brother as well, it's quite isolating because my mum's side are not all blood relatives, even though they are my relatives. So it's just kind of left with me and my brother. 
So there's, there's no one really in the family that we can really turn to about it because no one knows anything about it. And it seems they're quite in denial about it because they know that me and my brother could end up how my mum was. So essentially you feel disconnected from yeah. your family because Definitely. they don't want to talk about Huntington's disease. Yeah. And I know that probably the closest members of my family wouldn't want me to get tested in case I tested positive. And they'll have to live with that as well. So it's, it is really difficult when it comes down to family and family that aren't involved with in HD. Um, so when your mother uh, was symptomatic, uh, was she still taking care of you and your brother? Yeah. She kind of, that was, I think my mum would have carried on doing that for as long as she possibly could have done. Um, that was a temperament, I think, even at 16 and me being 20, we were still her babies, so she would always try, even though it explained to her that, you know, you don't have to worry, she'd ring me up whenever I went somewhere, make sure I got there okay, and she'd ring me up when I was at uni, she'd ring me up every Sunday, have the same conversation with me every Sunday, telling me what she'd done, which would always be the same thing. And um, she always tried to maintain that. She would always, she'd go to the shop for me if I was poorly, and I'd be like, Mum, you don't have to go. But she'd still go and do it, she'd always, and she always maintained that up, up until probably the last few weeks we were with her. Uh, and after your mother's death, uh, who looked after you and your brother? Me. And how old were you at the time? Um, I just turned 20. And my brother was, it was a few weeks before his 17th birthday. And um, my mum's brother um, kind of kind of took on the role as father. He didn't live with us, but he would come around and do jobs for us. He helped arrange my mum's funeral, helped everything like that. Um, and I was kind of, my dad offered to move in and live with us, which I didn't want. Um, towards the end, my mum didn't want anything to do with him. And I respect my mum's wishes and I know that it was, it was difficult and it was, my relationship with my dad could be a lot better but it was left kind of to me. My brother wanted to stay with me, and at the time I thought the best thing was for us both to stick together and for me to kind of take everything on, which was stressful, to say the least. So was your relationship with your father uh, affected by Huntington's disease? Not particularly, no. If my dad ever mentions it, it's always, oh, I hope you and Simon don't get it. And I don't think he really understands, understands it. And I don't really want to get into a massive conversation about it with him because I feel it, it will just end with him going, oh, I, don't, I hope you won't get it. And because he never really saw how my mum was. I think he saw once shortly before she died and I think they had an argument and I think they might have seen each other again and she apologised, but that was, that was the HD. So, it hasn't directly affected my relationship with my dad because there's already issues there anyway. But it is a topic that I just avoid speaking to him about. Uh, and how do you feel about being at risk? I feel, some days I feel all right, don't think about it. Some days I feel really upset about it. I feel really depressed about it. I think I'm 23 years old now. My mum was 46. Am I halfway through? Um, but mainly I try to think of, I think, well, there's a good chance I will get it. I know there's a good chance I won't. But I'd rather live thinking that I will get it and do a lot of things I want to do and get the most out of my life that I can do just in case I do get it. And I think I've got to the point where I've convinced myself that I will, but having it confirmed still scares me quite a lot, even though I am trying to come to terms with the fact that I might get it. Uh, so what are your thoughts on testing? My thoughts on testing? 
Is it something that plays on your mind a lot? Yes, a lot. Um, when I first found out, when my mum was first diagnosed, I was 18. And I was said, I want to get tested. Saw a HD counsellor, spoke about it. And I spoke about it in front of my mum, in front of my uncle, then spoke about it by myself. And then I, after that, I thought, no, I don't want to know. And for the past five years, I thought, no, I don't want to know. And then recently, it's coming back, I'm thinking, yeah, I do want to know. But then I think of what would happen if someone told me I did, and then I think, no, I don't. And it, it, it changes constantly how I feel about it. And it's really difficult just to make a firm decision about, about, about getting tested and if I really need to know right now and if it's really relevant to my life now to know. And I think until I get to the point where I'm 100% sure that I need to know, I probably will keep putting it off. And uh, what is your coping strategy, if you have one? If I tested positive? No, just in general. Just in general. Against HD, of course. <laughs> coping with it. I guess it is to kind of try and get on with things and do things to kind of, in spite of HD and just think, well, I'm not going to let it stop me doing this. I'm not going to let it, kind of, the thought of it take over. Even some days it, do, it does manage to creep in, which is inevitable. But I just try and think, well, I want to do this. This needs to be done. And I'm not going to let HD get in the way of that. So would you say that uh, you use HD as a motivation? Yeah, I do. And in some, some ways I do, in some ways I think, oh, why, why am I doing this? What's the point if this is going to happen to me? And because I saw how bad my mum got towards, towards the end, and I try to use it as a motivation, because if not, it really scares me. And if I try and get a load of positives out of it, I feel a lot better in myself. Whereas if I, if I keep thinking, thinking about it and think about it in a way that isn't motivating, I'll just go downhill and I can't do anything and it's really scary.